As the world recovers from COVID-19, economies are now running hotter than predicted. The economy is experiencing a very strong recovery. The economy is experiencing a very strong recovery. We brought this economy back from the brink. But with growth has come a surprising change. Inflation soared to its highest level in over a decade in April. The sharp increase in inflation blindsided many economists. Almost no one saw it coming. Inflation is the least predictable it's been for a long time, probably for decades. But is this high inflation just a temporary blip? Or could it spiral out of control? It's the most important question for the global economy at the moment. Welcome back to another exciting video from Booming Business. Today's video is about the future of inflation. Before we start the video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell icon. Let's get started. Inflation is when prices rise over time. That'll be a dollar sixty-five, please. Not that much. When items and services, from bananas and belts to housing, and heating, cost more than they used, meaning you get less bang for your buck. Keeping inflation steady is a balancing act. Most rich world central banks aim for prices to increase by around 2% a year. At that level, consumers don't notice changes in prices too much. But when it becomes higher, it can be problematic. You could have a little over 2% a lot of the time and not worry too much. Or you can have a lot over 2% for a short period of time and not worry too much. But what you don't want is a lot over your target a lot of the time because that's really going to start causing you uh, economic problems. For years, the question policymakers had been asking is why is inflation so low? Economies were quite strong, unemployment was very low, and people were puzzling about why prices hadn't taken off as much as people expected that they would in those conditions. The pandemic, certainly in 2021, seems to have turned that on its head somewhat, and we've had quite high inflation, especially in the US, and that's led people to ask, is the era of low inflation now over? In America, inflation hit 5.4% in July 2021. In the euro area, inflation went up to 3% in August. In Brazil, it has reached over 9%. Central bankers claim that high inflation will fizzle out. So there's no need to worry. There will be inflation, but that the process of inflation uh, will stop. Our confidence in that judgment is somewhat undermined by the fact that Central banks didn't see this burst of inflation coming. So that's just revealed that forecasts aren't always right. The worst case scenario could be runaway inflation, like that seen in America. In the period known as the Great Inflation, rates spiked over 14% by 1980. Tell me, did you uh, buy any meat uh, among your shopping? No, I didn't. Too expensive. The root cause of this was the Federal Reserve's loose monetary policy and rising oil prices. What's causing inflation to rise this time around? The first clue is in the way inflation is calculated. Something that in real terms, inflation hasn't actually risen that much. It just looks higher due to the sharp dip in prices in 2020. For example, the cost of crude oil in September this year was $71 a barrel. Compared to September 2020, when prices were recovering from a collapse, the price has risen by 74%. But if you compare it to September 2019, it's only a 13% increase. This is known as a base effect. Inflation numbers in 21, which we will see rising, are of a temporary nature. But there are other important factors causing current inflation. Supply chains, for example, have been hugely disrupted by the pandemic. And just when it has become difficult to transport goods, demand has shot up making things more expensive. Increased demand is thanks in part to big government stimulus policies. America, for example, poured $1.9 trillion into a relief package, almost a fifth of US dollars in circulation by the end of 2020, were created that year. People in America have been really keen to spend their stimulus money that they've got during the pandemic on new cars. Unfortunately, early in the pandemic, car makers cut their investment in future production. Combined with that, we've had this global shortage of chips. So there's been not enough supply relative to the amount of new cars that people want to buy. As a result, you've had this spillover in demand into the second hand car market. People are buying used cars instead. Used car prices have been a major driver of recent inflation. 
In the past year, prices have risen by over 45%. Although recent months have seen a decline, it's not just the rich world suffering from inflation. Emerging markets have been hit hard. They are also experiencing endemic-related supply chain issues. And extreme weather has led to crop shortages, making food more expensive. In Brazil, the cost of black-eyed beans has risen by 40% in the past year, soybean oil by 68%, and cabbage by 76%. Tens of millions of Brazilians cannot afford to put staple foods on the table. The food and fuel is a big part of the expenditure of people in the poor world. So when these prices go up a lot, they reduce people's living standards. Uh, and this tends to be more true the poorer you are. It is possible to slow inflation. The power to do so is in the hands of central banks. They can do this by raising interest rates. What happens when you raise interest rates generally is that uh, people become keener to save and less willing to invest. And slowing the economy slows the rise in prices. At the moment, we're not seeing evidence that would alarm us, but we'll watch it very carefully. Their institutions are somewhat less credible than uh, the institutions of the rich world. So central banks have to be more on their toes and have to clamp down on uh, inflation more whenever it rears its head. Brazil's central bank has raised its interest rate five times this year. It was 2% in March and September. It was 6.25%. Central banks in Russia, Mexico, and Peru have followed suit tall announcing increases. And others are expected to tighten rates in the coming months. They're trying to uh, ensure that not only the inflation comes down a bit, but they also want to signal to the public and investors that they don't want inflation to be so high and that they're credibly fighting it. People's expectations are the final factor in the story. Inflation depends on whether people think inflation will get out of hand. Inflation expectations are self-fulfilling. So if people don't think inflation is going to happen, uh, then it won't uh, for the most part. Managing people's expectations is difficult, especially in such uncertain times. But as long as central banks are worried, you may not need to be. What's been unsettling in the pandemic is that central banks have been a little bit caught out. But in general, so long as central banks maintain their independence and their focus, uh, we should be all right. That's all for today. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content.